Hey, I'm Ken, and this video is part 10 of my Introduction to FlowLab series. Anyone can sign up for free at flowlab.io and follow along in their web browser. In this video, we'll organize our logic using bundles and give our player the ability to throw her stars at the enemy monsters. Bundles are a good way to package up groups of behaviors for sharing, reusing, or just organizing your logic to make it easier to maintain and debug. Our player logic is starting to get a bit cluttered, so we can collect the behaviors into bundles to keep it organized going forward. To make a bundle, we'll select some related blocks using the Select tool, and then choose Bundle in the wheel menu that pops up. It's a good idea to choose a descriptive name for your bundles to make the logic easier to navigate in the future. This bundle holds our movement logic, so we'll name it Movement. You can open up a bundle by double-clicking it, or clicking Open Bundle. When inside a bundle, the name will be displayed at the top, and you can close the current bundle by clicking the green checkmark. While we're looking at the player movement, let's address an issue that most people will have noticed by now. We don't have any logic to ensure that the player can only jump while touching the ground. There are lots of ways to handle this, but we'll try something really simple. We can add a switch, that turns itself off when activated. Then use a collision trigger that turns the switch back on when we land on top of something. Okay, that's a nice improvement. Let's organize the health logic into its own bundle. And then do the same with the stars. Next, let's enable the player to throw her stars at the monsters. The throwable stars need to be movable, so let's make a new object. Use the same star sprite, and make it movable, and affected by gravity. Let's turn the bounce property up so they're bouncy, and turn the friction down so they don't slow down when they touch something. I want this star to disappear if it hits a monster or the player, so I'll add a couple of collision triggers and connect them to a destroy block. This object can be deleted since we don't want it just sitting here on our level. Now let's add some throwing logic to the player. I'll add a keyboard trigger and set it to the space bar. To emit a star object, I'll add an emit block. In the emitter settings, select the new shooting star object. Increase the expiration time so it lasts a bit longer and give it a bit more emit force. Okay, that works, but we only want to be able to throw stars that we've collected. So let's add a switch that only turns on when we have stars. We'll 
we'll add a filter block. that checks for values greater than zero. We'll connect the star's output to the filter input and connect the filter to the switch so that when we have zero stars, the switch will turn off. Otherwise, the switch will turn on. Now we just need to subtract one from our star count each time we throw one. So we'll add a number set to negative one and connect that to our star's add input. We'll also move the sound effect so that it plays any time the star's count changes. Now we can only throw the stars we've collected, and when we run out, throwing is disabled. Next, we can add a collision trigger to the monster logic so that the stars destroy them. Okay, so at this point everything's working, but it feels a little flat. Let's make dispatching the monsters a little more interesting by making them fall away when they get destroyed. To do this, we'll make a new object called Falling Monster. And use the monster sprite. It won't be solid, so it can fall through the level. We'll use a once trigger so that it plays a sound when it spawns into the level. And to make it spin, we'll use an always trigger to add 20 degrees to the rotation every frame. The monsters should emit a falling monster object when it's destroyed. Now the destroyed monsters will appear to be falling away. Okay, that looks a lot better. Now we have throwable stars that can be collected and used to destroy the monsters. Thanks for watching.